With the excitement of the stage one playoffs now behind us, teams are really starting to turn their attention towards the end of the season. Starting to think a lot about their standings on the ladder itself. And this game is definitely going to be an important one to decide how either of these two teams go forward especially into the later part of the season. I'm Mitch Leslie, Matt Marillo is here, and we have I the London yet. Spitfire. Yeah, we are, we are not in the press simulations. Yep. <laughs> I am Australian. I know you guys think that's a simulation. We're real. Um, both these teams are four and four. So Atlanta and London, both, uh, you know, decent stage ones, but London definitely didn't reach the high heights that everyone expected coming off the back of the season one champion. No, I think it was just a weak meta for the London Spitfire. I think as the season goes on, they're a team that, you know, is equipped to deal with the ups and downs, right? They had a lot of ups and downs in the season one of the Overwatch League, and you know, a lot of their up and downs were kind of tied to Birdring, right? When they know he would go out for a stage, come back in, now he's back in the lineup, and you can see the difference that he makes. I mean, when he's when he's on Birdring, and you know, he can play so many different heroes, him and Profit form one of, if not the best, DPS duo in the league. So I think it's just, you know, can you keep Birdring engaged? Can you keep that high play up? Can you keep him hungry as well? I think, yeah. you know, London, I mentioned this yesterday, I think as well, that London were pretty clear about the fact that they knew the stage one meta did not suit them. It was not a style they liked to play. They didn't like playing Reinhardt. They didn't like going without DPS players. But now Gesture, obviously, back on the Winston much more frequently. His stats have been very, very good. And like you mentioned, Birdring now yeah. coming back in. He and Profit were always considered a devastating duo when it came to damage dealers. Yeah, both of these teams, they, they don't have the hardest road in Stage 2. Uh, you know, two of the you know, easier schedules in the league. Uh, so you see Atlanta, they rank in, in 11th there with the opponent win percentage. They're just over 50%. And now you see London, you know, that's time for 60 to schedule, you know, 47%, you know, round it up here is, you know, they, they, have a, they have an opportunity with a, a meta that's going in their favor, you know, a, a easier strength to schedule, make up for some of those losses earlier in the season. Yeah, this is where they stretch their legs, they get that yeah. win-loss record looking much more impressive, but they'll have to go through their opponent today, the Atlanta Rain. Changes for these guys as well. I mean, yeah. Bay coming in. I mean, he's a great character fit for this team. But getting reverse sweat uh, in the first match of the stage has got to sting the rain. Yeah, but if there's uh, somebody's confidence who isn't going to waver, it's uh, not going to be big. For any reason at all. Yeah, and I like it. You know, he brings a ton of hype to this team when uh, the Fran goes. And I think the Baby is such a mechanically skilled player. Like, when you watch him play, you know, whether it's hit scan heroes or even his Zarya, like, you see the trackings there. Like, and the guy is sick. It's just they got to work him into the lineup a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, and bear in mind, the last roster he played on actively was the San Francisco Shock at a time where the Shock were not all that impressive. So his stock didn't exactly go through the roof, but he was always considered a great player. Note here, Baby Bay, Erster, and Lair on the roster here as well. So we might see there's potential for three DPS uh, and more from these guys. Erster, we've seen him play a lot of Brigitte. He's very good on that role. This team definitely looking equipped to take on their opponents. Today, who would be the London Spitfire? Make no mistake, Matt. It is definitely about murdering and profit. The double sniper compositions that Atlanta was so good at last season still relevant now. Jester now on the Winston, like we already mentioned. <laughs> Some of these guys are still waking up. Yeah, probably. I would just walk by, <laughs> walk by the handshake. Listen, All right. Point me where I need to go. And All I'm business good. there for profit. I think, uh, I think he now is uh, aware that he just ran right by somebody. Trying to give him some love, but I uh, know this is the uh, London Spitfire that we saw you know, the same roster last season. You know, win the entire uh, you know, playoffs of the Overwatch League. I think uh, now that you can play more Winston, I think Gesture will see you know some you know, uptick in his performance. I think Fury, you know, uh, an off tank who can play like some Soldier 76, some Sombra, obviously very strong at Diva. So I think you have the tools here for London to make a run. In well, I think it's kind of important because. Guard isn't on this starting roster. I ever saw Guard was the one that was brought into this team for the last stage. He played a lot of that yeah. Sombra. He was a more flexible player. But now that you know Fury's in a position where he can make that switch, he can get away from playing those uh, flex tanks sometimes. That's pretty handy. I mean, this guy here we talked about, and we've seen Baby Bay play a lot of hit scan heroes. Yep. We've seen him play Genji as well. Uh, he actually had some of uh, the highest damage stats uh, on his team uh, uh, of the shock and say uh, in season one should I say so we saw a bit of, I mean, a bit of Zarya here for the Atlanta Rain they started off the series so well but again I think Hex put it very well uh, when he discussed how Boston would come back in their third reverse sweep sometimes you just gotta hang on and uh, see where the ride takes you here they definitely weren't happy to get swept you don't know how much scrim time that Baby Bay was actually getting with the San Francisco Shock they had so many damage dealers on their roster don't know how they were gonna fit him in uh, we can take a look at the map set here presented by Toyota Oasis will kick things off so 
a pretty good far amount we've seen uh, Profit play really strong far in the past. And look, I think that lower third we saw there briefly raises a very pertinent point. Can Baby Bay fill the void that Defran has left on this team? Definitely they've got that same aggressive attitude. They want to be playmakers. So that shouldn't be a concern. I, I think he can. It's just going to take a little bit of time. I, I think uh, you know, getting into you know, Overwatch League game shape, so to speak, right? The game is much faster than you know, being at home, playing scrims or you know, competitive mode. So I think it's just going to take time for him to get used to that speed of the game yet again. Out of the gates we go here on to Oasis for our first map of the series. The London Spitfire do play Winston. In the, this triple support with just the two tanks. So Bidoshi's going to be fading back to the point now, and London are unlikely to contest as they want to make a switch. Here's uh, London. They'll change things up. They'll go with the Reinhardt version of the 3-3. Three -three with they see Winston input. on the other side. Well, the, it's the right choice. It's not London's strongest composition, but they're just trying to be that immovable force off the point with Reinhardt. It's the right move. I mean, we saw much Yakpong struggled yesterday on this very map and stage playing the Winston against Fusion's Reinhardt. It's difficult to be Winston here. Poco has to be careful about where he positions himself. If he gets Discord or hit a couple times, then a hammer, he's going to be having a bad time. The bubble being thrown down, but Fury's mech is actually the first to fall here. Poco healed up, but there it is. Birdring is able to charge him down, hit the shield bash and remove him. 6v5, but it's just a mini diva for the London Spitfire here. Prophet being as charged as he is, though. This is going to allow them to push Atlanta off the point. Yeah, it's just so much harder to be able to take out this Reinhardt. Like, uh, you know, getting the stuns onto the Reinhardt, not as easy uh, as, let's say, the Winston when Winston dives in. So they were able to take out Pokepo early and then build off of that. It's uh, Prophet getting close to a Graviton Surge of his own here. Is, uh, you see, they have one player on the point, Pokepo just trying to contest this underneath. It's going to force Fury down. You know, with Pokepo diving, though, front line up protected here. Prophet taking a heck of a lot of damage, getting healed up in that pinch, and he is, again, charged and ready to go. He gets his grab a little bit later on, but the grab in the rain wasn't really followed up on. Pokepo tries to come in a little bit late with the Primal Rage to knock him into the self-destruct, but the combo pieces for Atlanta weren't really set up at the right time. London, though, they do one better. Self-destruct finding Baby Bay, taking a huge portion of Atlanta's available damage off the table, and now they transition to the later part of the fight. Just a huge earth it looked like at least Master would be able to avoid getting knocked down by that one, but we must have been clipped by the Earth Shatter, Matt, as he tried to use the pillar to break line of sight. Yeah, that Indeed. Shatter hits Master in Popo, as now Popo switch over to Reinhardt. This is so a bit late for this. Do you have done this earlier? Yeah. It, well, it's hard. It's the same thing that we saw from Boston the other day, right? They ran off of the point to go back to switch to the favorable comm once they got control. They lost. They never got it back. Uh, I think your biggest worry here for Atlanta is how far behind you are you know, building up that Graviton Surge yet again. Both of them used in the previous site, maybe they fall, so he's only at 28%. Profit getting very close to yet another one. 73% for the Spitfire, and they got a Transcendence here, which they're going to use straight away. Ursta falling early in the fight, no Brigitte now for the Land of Rain, now they want to try and jump on Popo. The Reinhardt Factor. Wow. Now the rain can't really move up and do anything at all. They got one more chance, Matt. I mean, once Ursa's gone, you know that there's no burst healing to keep the Reinhardt alive. So what do you do after you get the break? You just start right at the Reinhardt. You know, three players in the London Spitfire just go right at Pokepo. So they take him out is... And this grab self-destruct combo here for London could steal his point. Prophet definitely wants to force a Transcendence here out of Kodak. He'd rather the rain couldn't use it to engage aggressively. Popo slow, they're gonna have to use the rally at least to keep that Reinhardt up. Earth Shatter from Gesture doesn't really connect and now the self is gonna come in, charge. That Not worked either. perfectly! That's exactly what Jesse was looking for to set up the bomb from Fury and he gets two again. It's Popo and Earth that have fall down. Definitely the foundation of this rain roster and without them. Atlanta can't get back to the point. Nicely done by the Spitfire playing a composition that we know they didn't love in stage one, but they worked hard on it, Matt. And they got the Reinhardt set up with the self-destruct combo. Yeah, and I, and I had an opportunity, you know, in between the stage to you know, do, do one of the Axis Granites with uh, Nuts and Profit. And when I was talking to them, one of the things they mentioned was that, you know, hey, like, we're just trying to build to the end. Like, you know, the experience from last season where all the ups and downs, they're like, we'd rather start a little bit low and gradually build up and get strong at the end and instead of going on the roller coaster ride that they exactly. had last year. So no one wants to peak in stage one. But I think London has realized that this is a long season. They remember last year, you know, they weren't great, you know, at the, the, the middle of the season. Yeah, they were they good at the start, the end. Yeah, then average good. start stage two and three. Yeah, they're like, hey, we'd rather just work our way into that top form towards the end. I mean, they had it just the way they wanted it, man. They went into the uh, finals essentially as underdogs. So. I mean, look, uh, uh, 
it's just kind of like uh, professional sports, right? Where it, it, you know, the, you got to be good the last few weeks of the year when it comes for the playoff time. Nobody remembers who is you know, lighting it on fire in the first two weeks of the season. I tell you what, Pokemon, they're getting hacked up, so he couldn't really get away from Jester there. London are taking a large amount of damage from Erster, though. He's constantly pressuring with those rockets. Getting rid of a large body in the form of a Popo early is going to allow the Spitfire to assert their dominance over the point itself. And Jester doesn't really seem to be in a hurry to try and engage. They catch in layer out, and that's what Brigitte will give you against Flankers. The rain might have gone into a bit of a mismatch compositionally here against London, who are ready to deal with this. Yes, London comes out with Sombra. They kind of expect to have the Wrecking Ball on the other side as Prophet. Oh, a nice hack there. I mean, he got stunned and hacked from behind her, so that was incredibly risky. You, you have to think there's going to be some changes here from Atlanta, and real quick. Yeah, I mean, it's so hard with that Rocket Barrage and that close quarters. Dude, probably not going to live through that as... See if some changes come in through for Atlanta. Looks like they're going to stick on with this. Maybe you just want to get a use out of your you know, EMP coalescence, get that you know, rocket damage down from Ursa on the Farah, but they're going to walk right into this EMP of Profit. You see him hiding here in the corner. They should know. They have to know that Profit is close. See him look over on his teammate's screen, because then you can see if the players are coming through from their POV. Yeah, it's likely he's looking at Jester's screen now as well. Jester will be the one on the front line. EMP connects, and it does the job. He must have got hacked. There as well. After the fact, with Kodak going down, Mindfield dropped in that small room there. A lot of frivolous ultimate usage so far from Atlanta in this round. They may be making the same mistake they did in the previous round by switching maybe one fight too late in the piece. Here come the compositional switches, and Ursa is actually going to be playing the Zaya. Yeah, now, like you mentioned, you know, Prophet actually, when we see that, you know, player camp, he's looking over, Jester sits directly to his right, so they can have the, the Winston kind of scout out, he can get a great idea of when players are coming to land that big EMP. Coalescence now. The fight by Bidoshin. Baby Bay. Well, he would like to shut that ultimate down, and he does eventually. He walks in with an EMP, but already healing came out onto the London Spitfire that benefited him quite heavily. Jester is no longer hacked, and he can go for a primal rage here to start to segment the Atlanta rain as they attempt to approach. self destructing over the top. Poke post caught out by that one. That's the worst target for Atlanta to be losing now in this fight. Erst is going to get bullied here by Jester, and he realizes he doesn't have to do much more than this. Just force them away from the point, keep them split up. Master now has to die and desperately stall the point. The bird ring catches him with the Brigitte. And now in overtime, there's no real chance to get here. A little bit of a touch on the point. And that was that was Kodak fading forward, using his escape just to try and keep the round going. Never a good sign. Poke Poe now as well to fall. Switch over towards the Winston here. And it will be a cleanup. And Lair caught out again. Still playing this tracer in towards the Brigitte. Not a great look there in London. Weren't pushed to change their comp. They weren't pushed to really no. work outside of their comfort zone. They've just got to play a very straightforward game. Yeah, and Kodak doesn't really get anything with the coalescence because he actually gets hacked by Profit from behind as soon as he pops that Moira ultimate ability. So didn't really get any damage or healing out of that as London dominates map one here against the Atlanta Reign. The Overwatch League is powered by Intel. Game, record, stream without compromise on Intel Core i7. And by Omen by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League.
a leisurely stroll on this Sunday morning for the uh, London Spitfire. Early on in that map, I mean, Oasis, we didn't see a lot of Atlanta forcing anything. I yeah. mean, they were the ones that were sort of forced to switch comps and try and adjust and accommodate. And London had all the momentum. They were winning the first fights on the points. Really, it was very open and shut. I mean, uh, it, you look, a lot of teams run that heavy damage dealer comp with the uh, Wrecking Ball as like that solo tank. But against a uh, well, London Spitfire, who you know that Prophet can play a very strong Sombra, Jester wants to play Winston, uh, Fury wants to play Diva. You allow them to kind of just play what they would would have liked to play there. Now, they were sort of the far didn't really you know get those big pickoffs like you would have seen from let's say a a, a far player in that position. There's not a hit scan on the other side, not like a Batiste or anything. Look, so you're, you're playing into Mora as well. So Mora is able to pretty much heal over a lot of that far damage unless there's consistent rockets that are connecting. Yeah. And in all fairness, it was just Ursa that was you know putting down that damage to start things <laughs> off. There, you, we saw a lot of the Atlanta rain on city center, so sitting up on the high ground, taking the time, and there's some pressure from far rockets. But there's no follow up. N Lair wants to get in there with Tracer and finish off the kills that Farah sets up. But there's a break there. He gets shield bashed immediately and taken out of the fight. And that's when you realize the composition from the Atlanta Reign just made no sense against what Lana were playing. Was, Lana had way more of a robust approach to that round. Then, I mean, just really good reads from the London Spitfire. I know in stage one, there were some times where they would like switch to some compositions and play into some things that they, you know, didn't really make much sense. But you know, right there at the beginning, you know, the first point where they come out with the Winston version of 3-3, and then they see the Winston version of 3-3 on that side. They opt not to go to the mirror. They go with the Reinhardt base. I kind of so. like that. Even though Jesse yeah. would probably believe in his heart that he's the better Reinhardt in that case. Yes. They choose the composition that they know, even if it's not their preference, is going to be stronger in that matchup. Yeah, so they, they decide to play the strengths as uh, we do have a Substitution comes in here for the Atlanta Rains. Okay. FRD. So FRD will come in for Baby Bay. So he's getting things set up. We call him FRD. It's a truncation for Fried, which we call it FRD. It's just a little bit easier. Uh, but I mean, that's his name. Yeah. Well, FRD Fried. Yeah. It's all the same. Fine. So he comes in for Baby Bay. So I think he's an exciting prospect. He's yeah. he's, he's risen. <laughs> he really has risen quite fast. Uh, and coming in for Baby Bay as well, you expect to see some uh, you know, damage dealing options come from him. We've already seen him in, in his debut, and he looked pretty good. Yeah, so excited to see. I think Atlanta, the, you're an expansion team one, so obviously you're bringing players together, you're trying to get them on the same page. Then after stage one, you have to Fran retire, and then you bring Baby in, you bring FRD in. So I think this is going to be like a little bit of an adjustment period for Atlanta as they try and figure out what they're going to do. Temple of Anubis is next, but you're right. I think, you know, th this roster plus to Fran, that offering, there was a lot of impetus behind that. A big push as they came into the league. A lot of interest in them, a lot of eyes on them. Now, that element is not there. They need to find something that's sustainable, that will sustain their performances going forward, allow them to generate momentum. Um, as they sort of start thinking about, you know, this stage, this stage is playoffs, and then, of course, the season playoffs later on. So over towards the Temple of Anubis here. Decent record for the Atlanta Reign. They've won this one twice. This is point eight here. This is where London is going to be hanging out first, trying to capture this part of the map. And then uh, into point B. So we'll see, uh, looks like uh, it's going to be kind of like a classic Anubis defense here at the start for the Atlanta range. So they'll be running the Arisa with the Diva, and then you're going to have Widowmaker who can get up on that high ground behind. And then you have Ursa playing Junkrat. Junkrat can just put down a ton of burst damage. So if the other team tries to dive the tanks up on the middle platform, the little bridge here they're playing on, you'll be able to just blow them up. Uh, so that shield that Pogpo put up on to the high ground there allows Enlay to play a little bit aggressively to begin with. It allows him the upper hand in a Widow duel, which is uh, what we're seeing from Bird Ring. He's playing that at the moment. <laughs> that shield won't always be there though, and Enlay will have to uh, uh, back away. This is interesting from London. Uh, triple tank, Prophet playing Wrecking Ball here. Uh, so he's just you know, styling right now. He's yeah, going to be playing the Wrecking Ball as gesture. Top of the yeah, triple here. tank. Widow they're trying America. to set some kind of play up here. I think like. they're trying to obscure the fact that they have a widow, especially the way that they came out of spawn. Bird Ring never peaked against Enlea early. I would say that they want to make it look like they're trying to play like multiple tanks and then set Bird Ring up and let him get some shots. We'll see if that works. He's now revealed himself, so the arena are definitely aware that there's a sniper on the field for the Spitfire. Uh, but the you know, Prophet did come from behind Atlanta, pile drive on it, and Lair, and it actually forces him off of that high ground into an advantageous position where now he's a little bit more in the open. Or maybe Bird Ring can get an angle on him. Kodak is down right now, but Masa is still there, and yeah, he'll get the resurrect. With Ursta going down to Bird Ring, though, that is very important. He has a huge portion of Atlanta's damage here, defensively speaking, but the Spitfire need to chain this into a couple more kills. And having lost Bidosa now, and just, yeah. Prophet probably just has to get out after he's taken this Mega. So, you know, Atlanta does hold on here as uh, Prophet. Uh, Bird Ring knows that he's visible. Yeah, he has to yeah. use a grapple to get across the gap. 
Fedring is a, a, a more defensive Widow player, Matt. He likes to be the second yeah, player to peak. He doesn't really want to, you know, start the fight. So he'll likely try and stay hidden until the rest of his team engages and see if he gets some breathing room to, you know, take the 1v1 against Enlair or pick off some supports. We'll see if London decides to stay on this, as uh, Profit can definitely stay on the Wrecking Ball, but we've seen in the past, like uh, Genji as well, you know, can get behind enemy lines. So same strategy, he goes to the high ground here on Wrecking Ball, and that's going to force FRD up to the high ground, just trying to you know, protect his Widowmaker here. Okay. Over the top, Jester, forcing uh, Ursta back. Ursta having to play on the, the sort of low ground here, which is not really where you feel most powerful as Junkrat. They're going to wait this out, though. Valkyrie used here by Massa, so you're going to wait out all of this healing or the damage boost that can be put down. Now you're going to use a Valkyrie your own and push in. Ursta might just sit here and try and get a rip tire set up. Wait till eyes are taken off in here. Jester now coming with a primal rage. Oh, Ursta needs to make this decision pretty darn fast. Jester extremely low, and here comes the rip tire out towards Profit. He just. Well, he just thought about that damage. He's alive with one HP, and he's still able to get rid of Enlet. So that wasn't really the use of the rip tire that the rain were hoping for at all. Bird Ring now, really comfortable. This is exactly where you want to be as Widowmaker. You sit now with a great view of the battlefield. The enemy is barely able to pick their head outside the room, and they get annihilated by your tanks pushing in. And it's so difficult to probably deal with this comp because you have, you know, the Winston and Wrecking Ball Diva as well, who can dive, put a lot of pressure on. And it makes it, how do you go back and deal with the Widowmaker? Some changes here will come in for London as uh, they're going to go. Uh, you know, not the traditional 3-3. Three, three. They're going to play Winston here. Is, uh, now I think they actually may go back and let's see if they're going to go switch to the Reinhardt. Playing Reinhardt into Atlanta's no, defensive Winston setup. I mean, they have the May though, which is... Yeah, the May. Is, this is uh, very interesting. Now, we actually see these tons in Overwatch contenders. So in our, in our tier two scene, yeah. it was very common for a long time to see May even played on control maps as well. Uh, Tvik, uh, during his time in the Florida Mayhem, often brought this pick out, Matt. It is very frustrating to play against. Yes, uh, May can use the wall to flip players off or just land shots at range like that. So. <laughs> Uh, that, that May is a... Oh my gosh. May is a, I, I kind of put May in the same category as like a Doomfist where you go up against like a really strong May and it's just really frustrating. It's a specialist pick. Yeah. yeah. It's like really like a niche pick, only good in certain parts of certain maps. But you know, when you go up against a good May, it's, it, you have to all be on the same page because those walls could really you know, stop these pushes before they You need to begin. force out the wall and then you need to force out May's own ice block, which you know generally keeps her alive. So. What are London looking for here, Matt? Well, Prophet's behind, so potentially trying to set up a hack here. There's that big main wall that goes down. They get the hack on a Kodak, so not able to use Transcendence here. Fury frozen out of the mech, goes for a self-destruct, though, just to give himself a little bit of space to get back in the mech. But Ocean, this is a very risky fight he's trying to take, and now Enlay's going to try and freeze them both up, and it's going to force the Transcendence out. Enlay realizes now he's not in any immediate danger. It pops out of the ice block, tries to continue fighting. He gets emp though. Ursa's Riptire. We'll need to find a key target here. And he can't even get Birdering. The shield was well placed. Now London are in control. They've got two ticks on this point. Enlan needs to back up. He probably has his ice block available for him now, so he can throw himself into the battle. And the blizzard comes out. This could bring the Spitfire to a screeching halt. With Birdring and Bidoshin both out of the mix, it seems to have done the job. The Spitfire, Matt, they get very close. Yeah, you know, Fury is so good at using that defense matrix to eat up some of these projectile ultimates. Enlayer makes a really heads up play there. He actually comes from behind Fury. He freezes him with May's primary fire, and then obviously Fury not able to do something, then throws the Blizzard out there. So zero chance of it getting eaten. Endothermic Blaster is pretty nasty. Again, the May wall didn't do a whole lot. We saw Enlayer no. throw it up, but because there's uh, Winston and Diva on the side of the Spitfire, you can sort of circumvent that pretty comfortably. Still, if it's placed in the open, like in this door here, it is annoying. But with Enlair and the rest of the team pushed back so far, they can't afford to do that. Kodak is down early at that. Kodak could have built up a Transcendence in this fight, but now he'll have to wait and respawn. And with Ursta down, he might not have a chance to have a, a meaningful impact here, Matt. London are back in control of the point now. 87% and counting. Primal Rage had to be used by Popo there, but he's burst down himself. FRD's going to be de-suited. Ursa will get back just in time. He'll try and go for a pile driver, but he got hacked in mid-air, so he could use that ability. Self-destruct from Fury will make some space. Master's going to try and slink away now. But if they get off the point, and London eventually push through, they prevail. And they go with a very, I'll say it, it's a very no-nonsense setup. Profit on that Sombra. Jesse getting to play his favorite little Winston there. And the Atlanta Rain, they try something a little bit different. They try and go for the main. It definitely saves them in the fight where they got Blizzard, but it'll take more than that. Atlanta go on the attack after this.
lot of tire spinning from the Atlanta rain here. They try and break through uh, what London Spitfire presenting to them. Also, uh, Erster's tires really having the impact that they were desiring there. Coming up, by the way, uh, Thursday, April 11th, it's going to be the Battle of the Disneylands. Paris Eternal versus the Florida Mayhem. Uh, figure it out. It's going to be on Twitch, ESPN3, and Disney XD. So join us for that one at 4 p.m. PT. I've been to the one in Florida, not the one in Paris. I haven't, uh, I haven't been to Paris either, either, actually. Really? No. I really haven't experienced life. You know? I mean, I lived yeah, in Europe for three years. I just never got out that way, really. I digress, though. Atlanta Rain on the attack here. Do we see uh, this Batiste play? No. no. Okay, I'm okay with Faru, though. That's all right. I mean, this is a uh, uh, FRD. Oh, uh, well, actually, no. They got say Amasa playing the Mercy. Is uh, Okay, so we'll see them switch now again. So, oh, we're going back to the spawn. I mean, look, some more changes. If you see Brigitte here and you think, and you're hoping to get a lot of value out of Tracer, I don't know what to say to you. Lot of playing close to the end on the high ground to start with, and they drop down. Well, I actually, our Ursa hits a, a concussive blast that actually knocks some of them down from the high ground. They so, involuntarily drop down. Yeah, so uh, Nuss now, so they actually use the concussive blast just to knock them down. They actually ran Symmetra at the beginning of London to teleport the players up to the high ground because they can't access that uh, without her. So and now Nuss loses that high ground that he wanted. Uh, pretty much his sucks. here. Well, look, they don't have a static shield, so if someone fires a concussive yeah. blast, they can't remember. It's not like they have a Orisa, but this is working anyway. Jester's able to pick Massa up there. Yeah, he gets hit with a biotic grenade, so can't get any healing. Jester takes advantage of it. Stands there tall on the oh, bridge, and they'll take anything. him out. With this composition, you need that Lucio to propel you forward and give you a speed boost. They're waiting for a while. Still, the rain, though, want to trade a little bit of damage here. Ursta got doused by the looks of things with the biotic grenade. FRD has to eat these biotic grenades when they come in from us the bridge and stuff. Pogba doesn't even make it near the high ground. Gets deleted before he can even get up What there. I find interesting is that Atlanta is still trying to fight. I, I assume that Erster is using this as an opportunity to, to charge up his ultimate when he can't commit fully to a fight. He says, well, look, I'll stay alive. I'll just trade a little bit. How are you getting the divers across that large gap that we see Bidocean playing from. You just Discord dive across. So I think you're going to have to take a different route here if you're Atlanta, which they are. They're going to go in from the right-hand side. Now go up the staircase. See how London plays around this. You do have the Nano Boost here from Nuss. He's going to use it right away on a bird ring. That alpha damage on Pogpo is far too much for him to be healed up in a pinch. Now the Transcendence was used after the fact. Oh, Atlanta. That will sting. They needed that ultimate, ideally with their boots on the ground while they were contesting the point. But Doshin, in no universe was he going to be pressured into using his own transcendence here. So the uh, Nano Boost works out well for us. And London has seemed to really play strong here on the defensive end. They know exactly where Atlanta's going to go. Their the rotations are really clean. As you see, Jester get to the high ground. The Graviton Surge that comes oh, in here man. from Profit. Oh, and no. the Bird Ring just swinging with the flail. While all of Atlanta were caught inside that Graviton Surge. And there is an upside uh, to this, is that Atlanta haven't used it's all their ultimates. Welcome <laughs> to the Overwatch League, FRD. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it means to go. play deep. So they, they tried going around the left-hand side of the bridge. Didn't really work out. I think uh, you know trying to get to that high ground on the right-hand side is going to be really difficult. Uh, so I think you know, going the route that they're going in Atlanta, I think this is the right call. How do you break this when London's able to just kind of jump up with Jester, do some cleave, now he's got Primal Rage, you have the Nano Boost to use here as well. The problem is that at, at no stage if Atlanta Rain had to lead an ultimate economy, and Nuss having that nano boost is actually really important because it's another form of burst healing that they otherwise wouldn't have uh, outside of the repair pack. So Jester gets low, just nano boost the guy, gets a boost of health, and he's back to fighting normally. The Rain now going to move towards the point here. They've already got themselves one tick. With a rally, the Spitfire are going to begin their contest now, but Erster has a Graviton so They have to know that this is waiting in the wings, and he gets thrown out now. Transcendence immediately going to be used, but there will be a self strike in there. <laughs> You see, Jester's like, nope, I'm getting out of here. Birdring got taken down by that one, but Doshin's being harassed in the backside. So the rain put together this fight very well. They had the ultimates for it, in all fairness, but they didn't falter here, and this would have been their last real chance. Now, they're going to try and go quick here, as a few players from London die towards the later end of Atlanta's attack. Atlanta wants to take advantage of this, have the advantage in players getting onto the point first. First to boost himself along with his right click, but that actually takes down his armor first now and not his shield. So he loses his armor from the rally. It's not a big deal, it's just a small thing. Um, just the Reinhardt 
just playing in this corner here. So stays out of line of sight while still contesting the point. It's quite a safe way to keep the game going. It allows Lana to get everyone ready. Proper just yeets the grab in there as soon as Popo appears, but they're still not able to take down the win to the end. Primal Rage, even with a Discord yeah, Orb now, yeah. that is not amplifying your damage nearly as much. Speaking of Discord Orb, well, Atlanta don't have one anymore. Kodak went down early in the fight. Popo extremely low, waiting for those healing cooldowns. And he, he actually has to hide. He can't do anything else right now. Jester being pressured heavily on the point here, but no one really trying to finish him off. And that gives us a bit by a time to use Prophet and Bird Ring to find Erster. And Popo finally goes down. Yeah, and you wonder if Enlayer lives there for a second, if Atlanta decides to invest a little bit more into that fight. So I think would have had Rally and Sound Barrier, Graviton Surge to use. Maybe they're able to turn it there towards the end, but. Uh, and like falls, with, you don't use it. With Popo being a, a, as low as he was, and not being able to get your Winston into fighting yeah. form, like, you don't have a repair pack cooldown available. He sat there with 10 HP, he has to hide. He just took too much damage early on. Lana doing a good job of shutting him specifically down. Popo, his primal rage was forced because he got straight up grabbed. So you can see where Lana's priorities are. He switched to Reinhardt now, though. Another grab coming from Profit already. We're gonna have two grabs here. The problem is the rain don't have transcendent, so this will probably be nastier for them than it will be for the London Spitfire. Profit now. Oh! <laughs> both grabs get eaten at the same time. If by the Infury. Copycats across the map, eating up those grabs, so they're off the table. Ultimate wise now there's a transcendent that Pedocean still hasn't had to use. He's still alive. He actually got the repair pack there, but it's fine. His gesture was hail, party, yeah. ready to keep heaving that hammer. That's actually one of the first times I think we've seen that where two Graviton Surges come down at the same exact time and they uh, meet the same fate, going right into Diva's defense matrix. So, I mean, there was a lot going oh. on there. <laughs> and Lena wants to come out with it. So they've now switched off of Diva. They're going to be playing the May instead of uh, Diva here. So so why? Like, why on attack and not defense? Or uh, I mean, look, the, the May is pretty good if they can start to you know, split some players off. Great survivability. Almost like another tank. You see the wall there. Now Jester can get back to the rest of the squad. Transcendence there from Bidoshin. He didn't get cut off, though. So he's still able to supply that healing. And the timing was very good for London to realize they had to go for the Zenyatta ultimate now, as opposed to when they were fighting the point. Kodak is down, he used Transcendence as well, so the Rain are using ultimates before they even get to the point here, just to try and wipe the Spitfire off. But London are such good team fighters, man. Seems like nothing shakes these guys, and they just bound forward, let the grab go, two kills and the fight's done. Oh, and the way they attack, that's perfectly. When the grab comes through, they know that the May wall is going to come from one direction, so what do they do? They send like an even amount of players through each of the entryways, so they're able to get the follow-up necessary. So they realize that they're going to kind of get forced to split by the wall. Yeah. They split themselves voluntarily and turn it into a pincer maneuver. And I also think with uh, how good gesture is on Winston, right? He's able to use that mobility. Maybe you catch him a little bit too aggressive with the May wall, capture him from the rest of the team, see if you can pick him off early, gain some type of advantage in one of these fights. So Atlanta are hoping that London actually try and stop the midway to the point here because they can use the May wall. This time the Spitfire say, eh. Uh, I think we'll uh, not run the risk of, you know, getting split in half by Fury. Me. Fury's hiding to the right here, potentially trying to eat like a blizzard or something. Or, or yeah, or a grab. Yeah. What does he do? He gets stunned immediately. They're getting desuited. Him and Durson go for a grab pretty much straight away. I like this. Fury goes for a self destruct Oh, he gets one boat! Oh, you cannot allow that to happen! Atlanta, still able to capture the point a little bit here, but the London Spitfire just gonna move back in now. Blizzard, that's gonna go from FRD, but who's following up on the fact that London were getting frozen? No one, he got eaten. He didn't get to use it at all. Yeah, gets eaten up there by Fury. We talk about how Fury, he's so good at D.Va at eating some of these ultimate abilities. Ate a Graviton Surge in the last big team fight, and then here, eats that Blizzard. Just another stellar performance from a top diva in the league. Massa would have tried to stall out. That was the saddest Earth Shatter I ever did see. Pokepo attempting to make something happen in the dying seconds, but the London Spitfire, they look incredibly clean, Matt. It is very hard to find fault with the way that they're playing right now. They're playing just a no-nonsense brand of Overwatch, and the rain fundamentally don't seem to be able to challenge them on that level. I mean, this is the London Spitfire. A lot of other teams were scared to see here in Stage 2, really coming out with strong performances, showing the versatility of a lot of their players. There we go, boys cheering at the play of the game there, which for the record was gesture. Half time's coming up, we break down what happened in those first two maps. We're back with that three and four soon. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile. High ground or low ground, T-Mobile has you covered.
London's looking to keep things rolling here in stage two. They're having no problems with the rain up to this point. Currently sitting at 2-0 and oh, coming in to the half. Welcome back, everybody. It's Puggy here. We've got Mr. Brenji, Mr. Sideshow. And of course, we're watching Spitfire going up against the Atlanta Rain. And coming in, we thought this may be the game of the day. But so yeah. far, it seems like London's definitely in control, Bren. Yeah, definitely not the game of the day anymore, really, is it? You know, it's... <laughs> Depends uh, on the rest of the game. Could be in the second it half. Be, it could be in the second half, but it's been very one-sided so far. I mean, I was expecting a bit, li little bit more out of Atlanta Rain. I think everybody was uh, moving forward. London, you never really know where they're going to be landing, hit or miss, usually. Yeah, so, I, we talked a lot in the pre-show about the London Spitfire playing down to their opponents and never just coming out and smashing people. Right. Uh, okay. This match is here. They're smashing people at the moment, and it kind of looks like a bit of a revitalization of this roster. But I think most of it, honestly, is Atlanta falling to pieces. So as we go through these maps and talk about them a bit more, I got some, he's got some things to say about he's Atlanta. He's got some <laughs> things. He's got some things for you, Atlanta. Let's talk about the good things, though, for London. And one of the big pieces that led them to the 2018 championship was Profit. This guy today has been so fun to watch. He's been on Zarya, but he also got a chance to show off his Sombra play on that first control map. He's yeah. an unreal player, isn't he? He Absolutely really is. Freak beast. Like the, he can play so many different roles to such a high level. You can always count on him on your squad to just play up to up to his full potential. Yeah, honestly. crazy consistent. But also the thing that I love the most about that composition in particular is that Jester and Profit are normally such a duo. But you're not really a duo when you're playing that Zarya. There's not so much that you can really coordinate that much. Right. But when he's on the Sombra and Jester's on the Winston, they can go on target. You're not together. getting away alive. Exactly. They're back to like their old classic. Obviously, normally it would be Profit on Tracer, but Sombra's the new flavor of the month. So this is a composition that should work really well for London. Another name we got to know really well was Bird Ring. We didn't see a lot of him in stage one back when it was the 3 3 constantly, but he's here on the Widowmaker to open things up on Anubis. And is this something we should expect from London? moving forward in stage two? Well, this is clearly a set strategy to take down the Atlanta Reign on Anubis because they, the Atlanta is notoriously a good Anubis team. They like to run this Junkrat Widowmaker defense and London chose to have Birdring on the Widow to try and break it. Now, it's a high risk, high reward strat, honestly, because if Birdring doesn't hit the shots, then it's it's over for them. And but Atlanta Reign just had nothing. And a lot of those clips there were Gesture, the other counterpart. You mentioned it was Profit and Gesture in that first control, Birdring, He's getting a whole lot of space from his big monkey. Gesture's doing work so far in this series. Yeah, it definitely is. And will continue to do work, I think. Well, now that he's got off the Reinhardt, he should be back to where everyone was considering him as the best main tank. The best main tank. Brent, you agree with that? You think Gesture's still in the running? You can make an argument for it, definitely. I mean, we haven't seen a lot of the best main tank players still play. I'm still waiting on Gushwe, who's going to be playing later today uh, after this match here. So, uh, but you can, you can. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying he is at the moment. Sure, but, but, but he's up but there. He was last year, and I think he still could be. Could be. We'll find out. Well, we still have another half to go, and I don't want to say it's over for Atlanta. They have been able to bounce back in the past. It's not looking likely right now, but if they are going to pull it off, we got Blizzard World, we got Gibraltar, and then potentially a Game 5 tiebreaker. How do they get back in this series, I Brett? can definitely see some DPS compositions coming out from these maps, at least. Uh, I, uh, Gibraltar is a little bit, again, hit or miss, but definitely some Widowmaker play. And Atlanta Rain, they've just picked up a shiny new Widowmaker play in the form of Baby Bay. Little Baby Bay. There's an opportunity for him to pop off here today. He's up against some stiff competition if Bird Ring's playing on form, but there is potential here. I'll give, I'll give the Atlanta fans a sliver of hope. There is potential here. Sideshow, okay. you just Bring rolled your eyes. Mate. Go yeah. ahead. What do you got for me? I, I don't understand what's going on with the Atlanta Reign right now. They're making weird substitutions, changing their roster all over the place. It looks like they're a very chaotic in terms of who they're subbing in and out. They picked up a guy called Fried from Contenders, and they've taken out one of the best Divas in the league to run him. I mean, what they, is Daco being sold somewhere? I don't know. Is he being traded? Well, why isn't he being fielded? And then they're all over in terms of their coordination. They're not stringing anything together. They're playing scared. This is awful from Atlanta compared to what we were expecting from them. Uh, they've got to pick it back up in the second half. That just starts with their fundamentals. If you're going to play the roster, at least play it well. Atlanta, you're miffing Josh off, Ooh. cleaning up in the second half. We'll find Easy. out. Can they make it a comeback? We'll find out. Game three is coming up after this. <laughs> they don't just play for a team. They play for every fan, every rival, every moment, every match. <laughs> When everyone watching expects the best, they perform with the best.
Well, as Sideshow pretty aptly pointed out on the halftime show, there definitely seems to be an issue in fundamentals for the Atlanta Reign so far yeah. in this series. Sorry, Atlanta fans. It's been a tough one for you so far. Zero and two up against uh, Rejuvenated London Spitfire, ironically. Rejuvenated playing the exact style that they said last stage they didn't like playing. Yeah, well, I mean, look, they, they can they can bring in some damage dealers in as well. And I think, uh, you know, a player like Bird Ring, who probably wants to play, you know, your your Widowmakers and whatnot, like, some you know. The shooty boys. Yeah, I mean, when, when, when he's playing Brig, he's like, all right, well, you know, if things don't work out, we can switch off of this instead of kind of like being stuck to, to play that Because he was time, playing so. the Zarya yes. in stage one and Prophet was playing the Brig on London. And now they switch roles and it looks much better. Thumbs yeah. up. I mean, yeah, Prophet can play good. everything, so. So we do have the substitution. Right. Uh, don't, don't expect anything from the London Spitfire. So Baby Bay will come back in here for uh, end layer uh, this time. So uh, one thing I, 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 I you know Josh mentioned and literally like before, like right before he mentioned, we were talking about it up here. Yep. It's like, where's Taco? Like, I feel like he was a really strong player for Atlanta in stage one. Haven't yep. seen him this far. So FRD obviously is a flex tank player yes. with a Sombra uh, pocket. Um, and we saw, we saw him obviously play a bit of the deeper. I mean, he managed to, he kept up with Fury in terms of eating a lot of those ultimates. Yeah. I mean, having that uh, Blizzard eaten at the end of the round was pretty uh, pretty rough for the Atlanta rain. But yeah, we haven't seen Darko all stage. Don't know what's going on there. Well, it, it just seems like teams are prioritizing having a player who can play like Flex Tang in Sombra or some kind of you know, damage dealers in the mix where that's where I think you see you know, FRD come in. I think that is reasonable, especially in stage one. It was important for your D.Va player to be able to play the Sombra. But is it so important now, Matt? I, I think it is. Okay. I think it is because with so much like uh, so many opportunities to play like Wrecking Ball and some extra damage dealers, you need to have a Sombra player who can help you take out this you know, Wrecking Ball, which uh, like uh, is such a strong hero. So uh, we got so Batiste here with a. Well, I don't think London Zaya. will do this. Uh, London will switch off. The gesture probably goes Winston here, and it's. Uh, Kind of similar to what we... Oh, okay, no, so really big changes here. So uh, first time we're going to see Prophet play the Farah. So Prophet, very strong Farah during Overwatch League. It's inaugural season. We'll get to see him play it here. Ness on the Mercy to try and just pocket him a little bit. Get some extra damage. And Bird Ring makes a change here. And not, not going to play Brink. He's what? going to play the Hanzo. What does the Ring do against this? I guess he's Farah. Well, usually you would want, like, the, the Winston version of the Triple Tank Triple Support against this because Winston uh, is a little bit more mobile than the Reinhardt can jump onto one of these players cause some issues. You're really uh, relying on Ursa here on the Batiste, the only hit scan to you know, shoot this far out of the sky. Is that consistent enough for you? Maybe not. Discord orb you saw there was actually placed on Nuss, so the Rain were hoping for a cheeky little pick off there, but look at look at the displacement. You see the Prophet's trying to knock uh, the rest of the Rain outside of Ursa's immortality field, and well, Prophet destroyed it anyway, then Kodak went down. So this just seems like a, a, a matter of time, Matt. It's inexorable, the London Spitfire. Pick up, pick. Prophet has been floating above the fight this whole time without a care in the world. It's just the constant damage that comes down from the wrecking ball, landing those pile drives and the knock throughs, the far up in the sky, you have the Sombra getting behind, the damage from Bird Ring on the Hanzo, and there's such difficult heroes to kind of track down as you see now Pokepo switches over to Winston. So you'll have Kodak also play Moira. Moira not as diveable as, let's say, like a is in Yada, but I think uh, London will probably see this and start to make changes of their own. Again, I mean, Moira struggles to heal Winston when he's out and about doing things. It's, that's often kind of the issue. You have to be relatively close to them, and your biotic orb doesn't travel very fast if you're trying to, you know, send it long range. I'm just more impressed with London. They're, you know, I, I feel like at times teams stay on certain compositions for a little bit too long. That when they see something on the other side, they know immediately how they want to react. Yep. Go back to the spawn, switch things up. Big EMP that's going to come in here from Fury. It's going to connect to four. Yeah, Kodak's just going to get burnt down now. We can't fade away. And instead, he fades to black. Pokepo now getting Vitic grenaded, uh, which is not fun for Winston. Even the bubble wasn't enough to keep him alive. They were able to get a couple kills. He landed right in this fight. Getting rid of Prophet is pretty important. Fury would love to try and take Baby Bay off the table and remove that, that extra Zarya damage. But as you, as you can see, Baby Bay's was long gone. Yeah, I mean, they, they built up to that Graviton Surge, so you'll have that. So uh, London moves back a little bit. They want to get a speed boost here to get Profit back in the fight. Fury going, uh, looks like he was going to go back to the spawn and potentially switch off of this to go to D.Va, but now it's still staying Sombra. Sombra into the Reinhardt. This will yeah. be I mean, it's great for Sombra, Matt, to stage because you can get over the top of the enemy really easily instead of trying to go through them now. Graviton Surge, and yeah, Profit was the intended target. The first one. Nice little shift of the Discord Orb, actually. Straight onto Jester before he got charged. So he gets just blown up by Pokepo, and the Rain finally get themselves a team fight win. 
for the first time in what seems like a while. And Ember Ocean uses Nano Boost there, so he'll go back to spawn, switch things up, probably going to play the Zenyatta. Yep. See, that's Get fundamentally solid from Atlanta, right? That's what you want to see. Them execute uh, in a team fight that they should win. Well, here's the issue for Atlanta. So Fury getting a little bit of some more progress here with the car, getting a little bit of a back cap. But... He was dueling with Masa. Yeah, but yeah. Now, now you're going to have an EMP Shatter available here for London. If you only combo those two ults, you'll come back into that next fight with Grab, Rally, and let's say a Sound Barrier. It'll be difficult for Atlanta to hold on. Jess, you're going to give us the flying haymaker here. All we have to do is press Q, we get the Earth Shatter. It does look like, yes, he was able to knock Ursa and Baby Bay down. They were on the stairwell, but close enough to be affected by that Earth Shatter. That could have not got anyone, it was pretty close. But it doesn't matter, Popo and Baby Bay are down. The, the beating heart of this Atlanta roster, especially in terms of their composition, FRD will try and sort things out. That is the right position for Atlanta to play out of, though, because they, I mean, their options are London does a nice shot, they get to that high ground, and they want to force the Atlanta rain into this courtyard where you're seeing, you know, Profit play right here. That's an opportunity for a massive, like, six-player EMP, six-shatter. They decide to take the fight to London. That's their best chance in that scenario. Maybe Jester doesn't connect with the Shatter onto the stairs and doesn't hit a few people, and they're able to make it work out of that. But Even no. with the sound barrier from Masa, yeah, still worked. It wasn't enough to keep them alive. Profit now with the Graviton Search. Fury having switched, of course. You, you do have an ultimate advantage here for the Atlanta Reign, though. Yeah. You should be able to come back, win a fight or two. Transcendence when you get grabbed. Rally if you want to start a fight. You have what you need essentially. Popo also setting up a self destruct if Baby Bay gets a grab. So the Rangers need to play patient right now. No need to overextend at all. You see Mars up on the high ground here. A little bit from Prophet's field. You see he's just gonna maybe set up one of these big boobs, go for a big displacement. There's the running. So now the rain want to go forward. They see the gesture was a little over. Popo just lays that shatter into Jester's shield. Oh, the barrier gives us Spitfire strength to go forward. Baby Bay's grab is eaten up by Fury. That is bad. Popo knocked over. Jester with the fire strike. And the London Spitfire are a step ahead at all times by the looks of things. This time it's such a clean fight. And Jester building back up towards that shatter himself again. It's so hard when you look at London and how strong that roster is. Like. Fury has played so good today. I know, uh, e eating the grabs on Anubis, e e the eating the blizzard, eating a grab here. In a fight where Atlanta has a big ultimate advantage, you take away one of those huge, like, game-changing ultimates, it's massive. Oh, oh and that had to be a repair pack of Pokemon now as well. It looks like the Spitfire want to dive on that right heart. self destruct thrown in by FRD, but it's an Earth Shatter here. Baby Bay and FRD both knocked to the ground here, but it looks like the Diva can get back in the mech. Yes, he does, but Poco still went down. Baby Bay was knocked on his backside for a while and couldn't contribute to the fight. He now needs to really double down on the damage efforts here with the London Spitfire. Really aren't too bothered. Massa now has to just try and stall the payload out, but he's been discovered very early on into his foray. And it's up to Ursta with Rally to try and stay alive. Has some extra impact here, and Kodak is forced to throw the Transcendence in as well. Baby Bay goes down despite this, and Yammer Ultimate being committed to the fight. And it's going to be Popo. FRD drops in now with the pile driver, but Popo dies so quickly, and all FRD can do is spin around and try and keep this one going. It's full stall for the Atlanta Reign. That is the only option they currently have. They've not had a chance to assemble all of their plays. And one go, and Baby Bay just gets knocked to the ground. Very clean from the London Spitfire, as the rest of this series has been. London, a very fast attack here on Blizzard World. It's really strong. I mean, only six deaths across the entire team there. Really strong performance. See if Atlanta can put together a good offense right after this.
Well, Matt, after a disappointing reverse sweep uh, to Boston, Atlanta now need to do the same to the London Spitfire at this point in the series. Already two maps for London. They're looking like they're going to be struggling here on Blizzard World as well. London to have a minute and 26 seconds left in their time bank after finishing a pretty long map comparatively. Now, you know what's interesting is uh, last year when we were uh, you know, getting into the Overwatch League, a lot of like players came in and you know, I think in the damage dealer role specifically, it was like, oh, well, you know, I can only play like a few heroes, right? But I think as time went on, it became so important to have damage dealers who were so versatile who could play like the whole list of the damage dealers. I feel like this year we're seeing it be the tanks now who have to, you know, diversify their pool, right? You know, the off tanks have to play damage dealers. The main tanks have to play all of the main tanks. Like, you can't just sub people in and out. Well, it also helps that a lot of the off tanks we're seeing play are actually DPS players that have to play Zarya. Uh, Flexibility is, is, yeah, we, is very important here. Not. Okay, so it's oh, like a uh, London. Okay, so what they did at the start was uh, Gesture just uh, put a turret down in Storbjorn just to have fun. And then Prophet told the uh, Gesture what they were running in terms of like tank line. And then they speed boosting everybody. So they get the jump on them. They know that they're playing the Reinhardt version of the 3 3. London comes out and they'll play the same thing. Okay. So London Spitfire are pretty much all together now. They're a little bit late to the party, but it shouldn't matter too much. Fury and Gesture up to the high ground here. Keep an eye on that ticker. The Rain are close to that 33%. And they've got it now. Eventually, the Spitfire have to push back here. But the rain had good position. Look, they're out of pressure. Gesture so heavily here. London have to try and contest this in some way or another. Finally, Gesture is healed up and up, but FRD is kind of making it hard for them to get everyone ready to fight. They drop one point, but Ursa is very low, though. You can see the bird ring is hoping to catch it, but Ursa is playing very safe. And Atlanta get Gesture. Very good management of resources here from Atlanta so far in this fight, but they lose Baby Bay now. A lot of damage, speaking of resources, but the Earth Shatter from Popo was a very good connection. Getting rid of Bird Ring here. The kills are being traded back and forth still, and the Graviton Surge is going to be thrown out here. Prophet really trying to end the fight right here. Sound Barrier also used by Nuss, but Prophet was overextended a little bit too far. Gesture has returned, but it's a 3v4 kind of fight right now, and Nuss just gets ganged up on there by Ursa on the Brigade, who's doing a huge effort here in this fight. And London, ugh, that did not look great. Yeah, so they actually got the composition they wanted. It just doesn't work out as uh, we see Poco here with the 2k. Shatter, charge here. Oh, there you go. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. But ocean, but... Uh, well, yeah. okay. Prophet did commit that Graviton search towards the end. They only had three players alive. I was kind of surprised to see that happen. Bird Ring will use Rally. They want to take the fight up on the high ground. And Pogba actually gets stunned, but he gets knocked off in the process. Yeah, it looks like the Rain have to drop and join him now. And the Spitfire tried to beat them to the low ground. Yeah, Pogba. I mean, they were trying to keep him alive, Matt, but Fire Strike is first damage. And he can't do much about that. But if he gets two with a self destruct, Prophet is low. He's trying to move up and just stall the payload a little bit longer. Die on the payload is what London is saying to their players. They are slacking off, Matt, and it shows. Yeah, really strong start here for the Atlanta Reign. Is even able to combo a lot of these ultimates. London tried to they get cheeky at the beginning. You know, they got there a little bit late to that first point. It's kind of a snowball from there. Is London's going to need something big to be able to you know stop the momentum that Atlanta's got right I mean, now. They asked for this though because they gave that momentum to yeah. Atlanta with their approach to this round, and the players on this Atlanta roster are good enough to take it and run. Here comes the self destruct over the top here. I don't know how this is going to be set up. It's not really, but Baby Bay still goes down anyway. Oh, no, no, no Zaya for the, for the Atlanta Reign yeah, now. So, yeah. really, they just can't fight here. I mean, that's tough. Large source of the damage you coming from Zarya. Well. They use your own rally. I mean, like, we were talking about that. Like, where you, London needed something to turn the tides in their favor. I mean, that's a big one. You get them to use rally, the Zarya dies. They have to back out. It gives you some more time to charge some of your own ultimates. Trying to get back to, you know, about even here. Fury wants to control this high ground now. Big out of the defensive matrix from uh, the periphery of a lot of the land of players. Vision is very important. Oh, nice shield back set up there. Bird Ring knocked over. Fire Strike from Popo to finish the job. Transcendence. Well, doesn't really have a huge effect here. And Jester charges forward despite that, though. Was the Popo charging him back? Either way, the Atlanta Rain are looking pretty solid right now with the Transcendence in play, Graviton Surge thrown in. But Buster and Kodak have gone down, they're running out of supports here. FRD needs to connect here with the self destruct, but it doesn't work. Big fire strike from Jester late in the fight, by the way. That lays the rain low. And with Bedosa and Nuss still alive in the back line, the healing is way in favor of London. They can start to brawl. They can start to play a bit more riskier and more aggressive, and they do. Again, another Earth Shatter that comes down from Jester as he connects with two and just forces Atlanta back. So. London able to stabilize, obviously, the advantage of you know, having that defensive spawn. 
the, the notion working his way towards another transcendent. So, you know, got one really early in the fight, but getting one basically every minute now, minute one second. So, doing a nice job on the hero that he played most of last year, Zenyatta, just being able to farm up a lot of that damage. He's on Ursta here to, sh to set up a shatter here for Pokepo. Um, I would call that the sound that we're looking for. It doesn't work out. Sound barrier used by the Atlanta Rain, but Pokepo's taking too much damage already, and London see it. They notice the weak point in the Atlanta Rain set up there, and they pounce. And it had to be that. It had to be a shout out for Atlanta in that fight. They had nothing else to work with. And I think one of the things that you can see when you're uh, watching the London Spitfire play their oh. you know, Reinhardt version of the 3 3 is BB gets killed there late. They look way more decisive than they did in Stage 1. Like Stage 1, sometimes it would look like they, they weren't sure whether they should be aggressive, be a little bit passive. It looks like they're all on the same page. And I think you can you can get away with like, you know, some of that tank heavy comps. Look, maybe it's not the right time to be aggressive, but if you all go together, it's gonna kind of work out. You that have was, to help pool the survive. That was so. the crux of this cop is yeah. position. I'm talking to Flame last stage. He said, yeah, look, just go forward and play aggressive with these tanks and support. You'll probably still win. Good things happen, right? Where's the setup here? Oh, oh it dropped down. Oh, it did quite land on the high ground there. It's kind of hard to lay that one the way you want it to. Gesture, Earth Shatter. He got Baby Bay there, but there was no follow up, and Baby Bay's about to grab. Hey, I love how he like shattered to keep himself alive and then just charged completely away from the Atlanta Rain. It's trying to make it back to the rest of the team. Rally for Atlanta here. You may not even need this Graviton Surge. May be able to hold it. I think Fury tried to bait it or by flying in and then quickly turning around and flying out, making it look like he wasn't going to be there. But Baby Bay realizes. Absolutely no need to go for that. Getting a kill on Profit there would have been really good. You had to leave it though. Hello. Now you're just against the clock here for Atlanta. I mean, you're going to get around this first corner. And let's say for even say you win that first fight, second corner, you're about the same time as London. So it looks like you would finish with less time than London here yeah. in the time bank, but at this point, you just need long. to finish the map. Yeah, take about that long, long to get there. Yeah. Push to the end of the map. Grabs here for both teams. So there was a window where Baby Bay was the only one with one, but he didn't see fit to use it. He tried to burn down Fury before he went for the grab, but he thought that this would be just as good an opportunity. Where's the setup? Nice little group on gesture, but it doesn't force them to get eaten up by the self destruct. Now, sound barrier for the line of Spitfire and the rain, respectively. They both go for it. That's a large shadow, though. Kodak and Baby Bay knocked down, but they had sound barrier defense on them. That overshield protecting them from any follow up that would have come. And again, Popo focused down first. I mean, it's kind of what I was talking about. You're already at less than the time bank. So with that one fight, how long it lasted, and how long it would even take the payload if you win that fight to get around the corner. Look, and all the offensive ultimates from Atlanta Rain were essentially yeah. used there. I mean, London, you have the opportunity here. You can invest into this fight. But because Atlanta spawns so close, you think they're going to get like two more fights even if you do win it. So if you're London, you may actually want the payload to move a little bit, get further away from the Atlanta spawn, then go heavy on the ultimate. Baby Bay keeps getting hit by fire strikes here, Matt. They've already used the repair pack on him once. This is why they had to wait until Popo's shield was almost broken before they could go forward the rain. They couldn't afford to get aggressive with a half hell Zaya. Now they have a chance. They need to put on pressure here. And look how they just start to take ground, forcing the transcendence, and then back away. They realize they've forced out an important ultimate, but London aren't willing to let them escape so easily. Popo now charges into the little alcove and Burberry. Looked like he was caught. But Popo wasn't there to protect his team from the Earth Shatter, and that's going to get brought down by Gesture. The Graviton Surge also thrown in there. Atlanta Rain, you can see the cogs ticking. You saw what they tried to do by forcing Bidoshin's ultimate out. But the Spitfire chased him down, gave them no choice but to fight. And London wants to get aggressive here. You have Rally. Make it costly to get out of the spawn for Atlanta, even if they get back to the cart. Because then the, the London Spitfire have defensive spawn advantage, and they'll have, you know, the ability to come back with some ultimates Master of their own. Try and back cap yeah. here. He's gone on the payload, but London see it straight away. They know exactly what the Raider are trying to do. Oh, Baby Bay again! Graviton Surge eaten up by Fury. That option's off the table. FID self destruct to the high ground. I don't think he wanted to leave it perching there in the end. It didn't really do too much. Now with the transcendence, the London Spitfire can get aggressive once more. They will. They push up. Popo knocked out of position almost onto the low ground. He'll try for a shatter. It's mostly blocked, but Birdman does go down. Jesse got bubble, but he's getting focused hard. And the rain finally find a way to come back. Yeah, but, but what will happen is, is London will come out of the respawn here. The Bela sustained for a little bit, then Profit will have this Graviton Surge. Kodak does have Transcendence, though, so all that healing. May have to use it before the grab to keep everybody up. Profit will go down to zero charge now, having to respawn back in, so it might be a while before he gets that ultimate. But Birdring has moved over towards the Batiste, and also Gesture drops in. You see the Birdring's immortality. Field was taken down, but it was enough to keep Gesture alive as he went for the engagement. Transcendence now 
for the Atlanta Rain. I try and stay in this. Popo pushing forward. Look at the profit. He got it now. Big damage off the table. Baby Bay follows up on the Burdering as well. Kodak and Bidoshin actually take each other down. A gentleman oh. filled with fury ends it. He throws in the bomb and gets two. It'll take a little bit more than that. But right now, the Spitfire are looking solid. Trying to chase down FID, but he gets his back back. And that's important. Now the two on one with Muscle rejoining. The Lana Spitfire are going to be forced out just to stall things out. Fury did well to stay alive for as long as he did, but the self destruct he will take Fury out of the picture. Furdering trying to throw an immortality field in there, but it wasn't able to keep his team alive either. Proper now on the tracer. Not really being bothered too much, but he needs to be careful of the Brigitte. Urs is looking through, trying to chase him down. Shield bash stun and remove the tracer, but Nuss goes down first. Furdering finally missing. Atlanta get there. It wasn't pretty, but they finished the map. Oh, they barely get there. As I thought Fury with that self destruction was going to clutch it out for the London Spitfire, but Atlanta able to complete the map. No time remaining, though, in the time bank. Now it's going to be the Spitfire now just to see if they can get a tick on point A in the overtime right after this. The best result that the Atlanta Reign can uh, claim in this map is a draw. Which would essentially mean that <laughs> there's no way they can win the series now. So based on the composition here, they look like they are trying to hold out for the long haul and you know, at least not lose another map here. But uh, you know, following Blizzard World, they'll only have one more chance to get a map win and Spitfire already have two. So you saw the issue with this composition that Atlanta ran uh, the other day. It was not Atlanta that ran it, but the, the main issue was is that when you get by Baby Bay, who's playing the Bastion up on the high ground, and you can just contest, it's very hard with the rotation for the Bastion to get around to that backhand side when you have the damage of the Farah and the Hanzo coming down. So we'll see how Atlanta plays uh, this comp. So we saw yesterday not work out too great. Probably will start off here. Consistent shield pressure as well, he'll be able to provide, as well as other kinds of pressure, like putting damage on towards Masa. He's one. A baby may get slapped on the rotation, just jumping down as the bash. Nice immortality field thrown yeah. out there by Kodak. That would have been lights out for the rain had he not applied that. Baby may getting picked off there. Okay, so this allows the London to take some more ground now. The rain had to very quickly back away, almost having lost the round there and then. And this is Prophet's job right now. He is working on the shields. Yeah, like he just needs to pump damage into the shields, bird ring as well. You're playing around like you know, some displacement from gesture hacks that come in from Fury. One but chance, man. You have to have just FRD contest the point. They do get a hack onto him, so they're trying to burn this diva down. Buddy getting killed up, Kodak pressured as well. Bird ring gets Erster. Big damage missing from the table now for the Atlanta Rain. A gesture. He's gotten himself in amongst the pigeons. Kodak's immortality field goes down. He tried to put up an amplification matrix, but it wasn't well placed. And Proper was able to rain the rockets in on top of him. Popo just stands inside the Dragon Strike, almost accepting his fate. And now with the Atlanta Rain essentially being cleaned off here, Erster was brought back to life. Baby B has to save the day. He finds Pidocean with one of those rockets now looking for an airborne shot on us, but no, it's not enough. Prophet drops in with a barrage. FID doesn't have enough defense matrix to keep him alive. He tries to force London off the point to get the overtime done. And Prophet does have to hide. That leaves Birdring quite vulnerable here. Atlanta have a chance. Nasa gives up his life to try and go for a crazy resurrect, but it won't do the job. Concussive Blast looked like it would have won the round for the Spitfire there as Prophet had knocked Kodak away, but Poco now returns on the Winston. Here's an EMP though. The mines drop in for Jester now, and it's so dangerous. Poco can't stay alive. He can't even move. He'd otherwise get blown up. Notice Baby Bay hit a mine as soon as he translocated onto the point. And that looks like it'll do it here. The London Spitfire will take map number three. It took him a while to break this bunker composition map, but they found the picks. Yeah, and it seems like teams have really figured out how to break this composition with the Bastion in the Batiste. That does not work for the Atlanta Reign here on Blizzard World as London take the series 3-0, potentially with a chance to get that 4-0 sweep. Yeah, one more map to come, and it's an important for London who want to start looking real good in stage two. We'll see you for that in just a moment. The Overwatch League is powered by Intel. Game, record, stream without compromise on Intel Core i7.
and by Omen by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League. Just like they drew it up, the London Spitfire walk into this game knowing it's a must win as they all are for them at four and four. And uh, they look very clean. Execution really uh, can't complain about it. I, I think their defense on Blizzard World uh, was a little questionable there. Obviously, they got shaken off that point pretty quickly. And when, when you give Atlanta a chance, when you, when you give them a, an option to keep playing or to get a time extension or anything like that, you are taking a big risk. However, they do end up winning the map there, breaking the bunker composition, and Gibraltar will be our final map of the series. Yeah, and although uh, you know, Atlanta has looked good early on in the season, this has been a rough series because you're also trying to work two new players into the mix against a team who has been playing together for such a long time now. I mean, think about even oh, go in scrimmages before the Overwatch League last year, all season long last year, you know, playing up until this season, just way more experience playing together for the players on the London Spitfire as opposed to Atlanta, who adds FRD and Baby Bay this week, right? So trying to work those two players into the lineup, get game ready in real games, uh, so to speak. And now, of course, in a, in a stage which requires you to be able to play what we see here, which is uh, tank heavy compositions from the rain, but also play a lot of damage dealers here, which we may end up seeing from the Spitfire. I mean, Gesture will be happy with this map. London have already won it once in this stage, and it allows them to really play a lot of that Winston to great effect. So they're going to actually, uh, let's see if they get a, so they're going to have Fury on the here, really. try and get, well, they're going to just try and use a haul here to pull somebody out and then get the hook. So they don't actually do so. So they'll go back to the spawn, make some changes. Yeah, I was probably, wouldn't be terribly surprised if we do see Zarya here. Profit there. They're pretty standard so far for the Spitfire. They, I appreciate that as well. They're not mucking around. The only thing I was wondering is if Gesture goes back and plays Reinhardt. We've seen teams play the Reinhardt into the Winston here. Uh, usually on Gibraltar, you don't exactly see it because of the verticality. You see, like, with the Winston trying to dive up. But, you know, when teams want to take this fight underneath, uh, you know, into this tunnel, that's where the Reinhardt could be advantageous. If you're struggling to get through the choke, you absolutely yeah. want to go for something like that. Uh, the rain will drop on top of you either way, though, and you can see that's what they're trying to do to get a Spitfire. Well, they didn't die on the car, which is interesting. So they're going to be dragging this fight out a little bit. They must believe that they can win it. But with Fury getting desuited, their, their options are getting more and more limited. And they've lost a minute now, when otherwise they might have only lost, you know, 30, 40 seconds. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think the idea was to win it. Jester actually moves the payload, like, underneath the tunnel. So just giving them a little bit of space. Look where how much ult percentage you've given to the Atlanta yeah. to this. So you can see just, uh, you know, Baby Bay's just mechanics is uh, Fury. <laughs> Still outside of his Diva Mech, uh, Bird Ray comes around the corner trying to help him. Oh, he's got to run away. Profit now has to use the bubble. Is... This this could be a spawn camp, yeah. yeah. I mean, now with Baby Bay supercharged up, the London Spitfire down a player or so, they just got six... One fight, one fight and five ultimates is what Atlanta have got because the Spitfire drag it out so much. Yeah, but what'll happen is, uh, you know, Fury will end up eating an ultimate, right? You know, they'll, they'll have the ultimate advantage now, and uh, they'll turn the tide. This kind of how the series has gone this far. Right? Yeah, so it's true, and you can all, it's not analysis, but you can almost expect it, right? Baby Bay, will he just eat this one in? No, 
right. He's been very patient. Yeah. yeah. You can see the focus on Andre's face. He ain't messing about. And I think with how, like, the reason you have to be so cautious is because of how Fury has played it the whole series, where he's been able to lead some of these key ultimates. Jess is forced to prime a rage here. Lana now having to start using some of those ultimates to get aggressive. Maybe they might be caught here. He is. He's taken down, but Ocean's also able to get the transcendence there. The Spitfire almost feign weakness. They pretend like they're, you know, in a bad spot, and they force a to commit a little bit, then they go forward themselves here. Payload. Well, it's uh, not moving right now, I will say that much. Fury was desuited, but goes into the self-destruct here. I don't think Bird is going to get out of this one very easily. Popo is very low, in fairness, but he has a bit of help, and that's really all he takes in this game. Lands on top of Bidoshin. The payload is no better for it, and both teams have used a lot of ultimates. Yeah, but, I mean, London forces every ultimate out, and they hold on to their Graviton Surge. So they'll probably end up with a, a Graviton Surge, plus, like, a Rally here, the amount of damage that Bird Ring would be able to do, just kind of swinging into that grab. So he did get... Atlanta and use all their ultimates. Now, the reason you have to play a little bit more passive there if you're Atlanta and just wait a little bit longer is because you're so scared about one of those, you know, the Graviton Surge getting eaten there by Fury. But you have to make sure you land it. It allows London to build up some ultimates and vests, which in turn, you have to use some more ultimates to secure the fight. Repair back use and engagement has been conducted. They're all going to go down here. The Spitfire again, Beta Lander in. They know they're going to be trying to play aggressive here. And they walk straight into a Graviton Surge, and they had no support ultimates to mitigate the impact of that whatsoever. And this should realistically secure London now with this point. We might see a FID try and drop down. If Jester had stepped in the doorway, he could have body blocked this, but it'll be a self destruct bubble thrown on top. Jester absconding just in case the bubble is broken. Atlanta wants to fight this. They've used Rally as well here as they come back. You have to go through. Pokemon close to a primal range here. Kodak has a transcendence. We'll see how much London will be forced to use here. Actually, a push back just positioned away from the payload to such a degree that they can't really fight. Master Popo, that's very aggressive from them here, and Lana will peel for that. Yeah, not ideal late in the fight decision making from the Atlanta Reign. Maybe hoping to force more ultimates out, so if that was the plan, that worked. They did get Bidoshin to use Transcendence here, and Kodak still has his. Yeah, and they push Kodak back through the doorway, and Bidoshin stands there with the Transcendence, just blocks him, so he no line of sight for the Zenyatta, not able to get any of the healing your discords down, and then Bidoshin rotates back out, trying to heal some other Teammates with Transcendence and Jester just stands to the spot, continues to block the doorway. I wonder if so. is playing, I guess, slightly, you know, quote-unquote riskier because of the way the series is right now. It's the last map and the, the No, cannon. I mean, I, I think Atlanta is still just trying to find their play style with this new roster as uh, Grab comes down, self-destruct as well, doesn't connect with anything. Now, looks like self-destruct landed on top of the shuttle in the end, so no one was really affected by that one whatsoever. However, the London Spitfire now started to chain some of these fights together, Matt, which can become a snowball. The ultimate economy and the pressure of the abilities that London are able to get back fight after fight is going to become quite oppressive to play against. Uh, it will be Baby Bay with a Graviton Surge here. Yeah. So, do you want to see him just like throw this in really quickly before Bidoshi can get transcendent? I, I think it all, like, you have to just kind of keep track of Fury. They'll probably try and like gain Baby Bay some energy, try and get Fury D mech, or just get him to right. run away. The two risky to throw it out yeah. before the Zen can ult. And then potentially try and get it. I mean, with, with the Zen ultimate, right? I mean, you have a self disrupt that can kind of just power on through some of that. The Ocean has Transcendence here, so the Spitfire have an answer now to the Graviton Surge. So when they, if they use Rally, uh, they decide to back up London. So London backs up. They do get Fury low, which is what I was talking about, but not an opportunity to use a grab here to capitalize on it. Just to force the Primal, there we go. Take a little bit low! Again! Time after time, Fury has denied Baby Bay the opportunity to bring his team back in these fights. I and even say. now... You're watching from Baby Bay's POV, you have no clue he's coming. He, that, that's exactly what they wanted. They got Fury low, and it looks like he just kind of like darts away. And it's just a second that Baby Bay's like, okay, I, this is the right read, right? I like, got him to move. He and darts away, the then he immediately 180s and flies back in. We saw this done last stage as well, and nice little boop there. That was well set up. I think it was a whip shot to knock Erster out into the open to be affected by that self-destruct. But now Londoner starting to cruise. Uh, Fury has mastered that timing, just being able to bait that out. Have no clue that it's even happening. Baby Bay and Masa, they get a little bit of a forward spawn, so London takes advantage, pushes on up, secures those eliminations. Is uh, You're going to have uh, all three support ultimates here for the London Spitfire coming online. So you'll probably need one or two of them to get around this you know, bend that you're going to see here. It's very difficult to get around this corner. Transcendence for Bidoshin and Kodak, respectively, here, so... We'll probably see uh, at least a period of just trading, seeing if you can get anyone particularly low force at the repair pack. A couple headshots here from Bidoshin. You watch those health bars at the top of the screen here. Popo just got a repair pack given to him there. 
Solana might want to try and apply a little bit more pressure to this Graviton now for proper, but he is playing low money yeah, too. But Ocean holds off on the train. They want to back use it here. Looks like they want to force this and see if they can actually get a fight win when they don't use Transcendence. There it is. Probably now can commit with a Graviton Surge and force on the sound barrier. No! <laughs> what? Oh, this is absurd. Baby Bay, unbind Q. You're not going to get to use it anyway. Fury just eats it yet another Graviton Surge. I cannot get a break. <laughs> Baby Bay has like a little smile on, on his uh, 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 player it. cam. He just can't believe it. Yeah, at this point, I mean... Uh, what can you do? I mean, you tried to you know, get him de-maxed. You, you baited out so many times. If Fury is just reading it so well today. Fury is just on another level, man. He's always ready for that. Tracking it. Some big IQ stuff now. That's over the top here. Took a little bit of damage, actually. To be honest, from Baby Base, he's trying to go over the top. Earth Shatter comes in, and Bedosian could not save Gesture. Even with the Transcendence now. So he has to back on out. Baby Bay, don't grab. <laughs> Save it for now. And it looks like it's going to be an easy cleanup for the rain. So 12 seconds left here. I, I appreciate yeah. this. I understand why you go for a stagger. It's going to make it much harder for Atlanta to, to even be here ready to fight. And there's five seconds left. London have to go now. But this could have turned against some Pokemon. Baby Bay have both gone down now. Transcendence has been used, but it's just really to keep the rain alive. Now they're going to try and hang around and fight. But London are back. They've got four, five players now as Prophet sets up. And he's on the Widowmaker. He's made the switch to Precious Spitfire from long range now. They're not going to be ready for this match. Yeah, a little bit of a role reversal. So you got Prophet on the Widowmaker and you got Birdring playing the Tracer here. It's Prophet trying to locate one. Birdring's picked up Kodak. As this is definitely turnable here for London. Prophet actually managed to shake off the Diva that was pressuring him. FID going for another shot. He does find it though. It's a two for one trade though. And the Raider running out of players now. One Earthshot is going to knock Ursa to the ground. FID trying to hide by the boosters of the payload, but he'll find him eventually. They always do. Swing and a hammer and he'd be done. Payload now released. We'll push forward to the end of the map of London. Breakthrough. You can see. Again, I've said this the last couple of apps actually, you can see what Atlanta are trying to achieve there. The Graviton to catch the, the Brigitte, to stall out London, but they spawned yep. close. I, I mean, you know, Atlanta is using their ultimates at the right time. It's just London is able to just fight on through it, or, you know, Baby Bay's just getting these grabs eaten, and it's uh, so difficult for Atlanta to deal with, because you know, they're making the right reads, it's just not working out. I mean, Fury has two ultimates negated on this map alone, and I mean, <laughs> this guy's just like, well, you know what? What do you do? <laughs> I'm yeah. trying, bro. You know, he had a, he did a few eaten on Anubis as well, as uh, Fury has really made the impact today with that defense matrix, just being able to take away some of these big game-changing goals that scrapped on Surge, the Blizzard. It's, uh, it's really made a difference today. It's, it's, you know, the, the last one was great because Baby Bay, you know, when he, when he, the one before he used the solo one on a Bird Ring, Bird Ring was using Rally, so he decided to you know, take him out before like the time ran down, give them an advantage. The one before that that got eaten, though, uh, you, know, you just peeked over the monitors. I can see Baby just smiling on screen. Kodak's laughing. They're like, man, like, they know. Like, what do you do? Yeah. But it's quite likely we'll see, uh, you know, Desire from Baby Bay again. Now, London here go with the Winston set up. So they're not playing the Reinhardt. Atlanta, again, you mentioned it before. Atlanta could sort of switch he Popo to Ryan to try and pressure. You know, you know we, we talked about Baby Bay with having his grabs eaten. But, you know, right now, I mean, he's... They're putting down some more damage than Prophet in the Zarya rolls. You know, a little bit less average energy, but uh, kind of comparable in terms of, you know, ultimate charge time, only about like 10 seconds or so separates the two. So actually having a, a pretty good game. It's just the, the Graviton Surge. It's not really, I mean, you got two kills off the back of Baby Bay's Graviton Surge. Two of them have been eaten, and nine Graviton Surge kills that come through off of Prophet's grabs. Graviton Surge, though, is I mean, you're playing in such mobile compositions, man. The grab is the best tool against them to take all of that mobility away. Ooh, Masa took a lot of damage early there. He actually heads straight down the underpass and away to heal up a little bit. I mean, the, the high ground. I mean, with those difference in Graviton Surge kills being at seven, it's essentially like 2 1 team fight, pretty much, for London in their favor with those grab uses. Fury just dropped down there to contest the payload while the rest of his team was setting up now. And London having that high ground, they can sort of choose who to drop on top of. So that's important for Gesture because it's easy for him to identify weaknesses if there's, like, you know, Masters out of position or Kodak is not protected sufficiently. Yeah, but when Atlanta rotates all together, it allows Gesture to just dive in and get some of that, you know, cleave damage where Winston can, you know, his gun just attaches everybody in the area. As you see, he's already built up to, you know, almost 70% of his primal rage. Just a false back. See, Discord all has been thrown on him. So the Atlanta Randall makes some progress here. London have to commit eventually fully. And they're probably hoping for Bidocean to have Transcendence by that point. A couple more orbs and we'll have it. Jesse gets bubbled immediately. You can see up on high, Pokemon tried to go for the pickoff, but got booped or shield bashed by Birdring. 
Bit of a split setup here with Jesse going down now, and it had to be a transcendence from Bidoshin. He got it, but it was a little bit too late. Now, the Rain have their own. Not only do they have a player advantage, they're able to match the healing of the Spitfire in this fight. Support ultimate galore as Nas goes for the, the sound barrier. Ursta uses Rally. Every support ultimate got used here by the Atlanta Rain, and they still lost Kodak somehow. Bidoshin does go down. You saw he was positioned towards a right of screen, a little bit far forward. And it, yeah, it looks as if the rest of the Spitfire aren't going to commit any more to this fight. You can see in the background, they're just moving away. Yeah, I mean, you, you could have potentially invested like self-destruct, primal rage until profit got back to use you no know, Gravis on surge. But Atlanta pushing up though. They want to get some of these eliminations. Is you're able to take out profit. He gets that forward spawn, so he gets the spawn that's attached to the last checkpoint, not this far Very one, nice. which is attached to this the new is, one. This is hunger. Great yeah. aggression here. And meanwhile, the payload has two players on it, so Atlanta are getting really good push, and they might be able to get through the most perilous part of this second phase here, uh, right in the middle. They do eventually go down, they knew this would happen. This can turn against them now. Pokemon does need to get out to safety. He was kind of, I think he was redirected as he tried to jump away. He thought about primaling, I could see it. He was waiting for the jump cooldown. He goes down now and that may have backfired for Atlanta a little bit there. Yeah, I mean, they get some payload progress, but not a ton. They may have went a little bit too deep. Like you probably could have stopped when you got that kill on a profit and then backed up. Not really a reason to push all the way on through. I think they wanted to get the payload, you know, like past the to the bridge. The, oh, yeah, past yeah. the bridge. Uh, it's not. You'll see. It's just around the corner. So they didn't quite get it all the way. Nice ball, from baby. The baby day there. Throwing on a Kodak now. Going to be caught in the graviton surge though, and you wait for this one. Oh, it was inside the bubble as well. It was like a snow dome of carnage. Fury. <laughs> Drops into self destruct and yeah, if you're not playing Ryan, the best you can do as a grab for Winston is hit E and hope for the best. Yeah, just uh, potentially, you know, they have that bubble save you, but Fury with a great self destruct placement right inside of the bubble. It's uh, always a sad sight when you're stuck inside one of those and the Winston bubble comes in, they're just bubbling the self destruct in to your own death there. It's... How do you get the London Spitfire off this high ground? I think that's what the Atlanta Rain are going to have to figure out. So. And you need to get to the payload without taking damage and force them to fight you here. For fear of going to let the payload go too far. But Baby Bay goes down first, Matt. Not good. Kodak missing. Fury gives up his mech, but he's happily. He'll get desuited. He'll be able to get back in in just a moment here. He, it's too far for him to walk back to spawn, though, so we'll have to just wait. And it, it's so interesting when we oh, no. see... Uh, he's getting taxi. Fury's yeah. getting taxi to spawn. Is, uh, you'll actually have this self-destruct, I believe, uh, not used there. Uh, yeah, yeah, FRD does use it to get a new mech back, so... See, uh, now they're gonna have Fury switch off, switch back, get a new mech back. So, you they value lose... the mech over the ult charge. Yeah, exactly. You didn't lose your ult charge that you got, but I mean, if you think about it, Fury only used it quite recently, so... Yeah. He, probably, he only looked like he only got about 30% odd, so he seems to be happy with that. Uh, he's returned to the fight now, so nice little play by Spitfire. That's just the little things that really count in cases like that. Jester has to say cover here. He just got a huge amount of alpha damage thrown at him. Soundberry comes out. Prophet seems like he was able to benefit from it, even though there was a Winston bubble that was in the way. Now the transcendence from Bidoshin is applied. Well, Pope Post caught inside a Graviton here. There is a transcendence from Atlanta as well. So that grab doesn't really do much for London now. Soundberry from Atlanta. London don't have one, and that could be their undoing here. Baby Bay is charged up, doesn't die early in the fight now, and he's exactly where he wants to be. You have a good grab that comes in from Baby Bay. You don't really get a ton out of it, but they're forced to use some support ultimates. You have the support ult advantage if you're the Atlanta Rain, and you turn that in your favor once that sound barrier comes down from Massa. Now, London finished the map in, in, in overtime. They still yes. get a time extension, though, because this is a pure escort map. They'll, if, if the Rain have time left in the bank, both teams will get that extension. So, even though you see zero there, there might still be an attack from both sides. Atlanta need to finish the map. Baby Bay. Do you love this being charged up? No! The Spitfire realized that Baby Bay was glowing. He was ready to fight. And he, he was yeah, out of position. So far up. He, I mean, he put himself out of position to go for the health pack to stay alive, but he just walked straight into the trap. I think he probably imagined that London would play a little bit more passive there. Maybe he thought his teammates were a little bit closer, you know, moving that cart, but not the case. Now London, when they switch over to the Reinhardt, you're gonna have Poco switch over to Reinhardt. You can play close. You can get aggressive in some of these chokes in the open spaces. Atlanta have a fair bit of time, in all fairness. They can afford to oh, play yeah. patiently here. They've got a couple of those important ultimates online. Once the grab's there, they have to grab bomb, and Poker will just need to set up with a charge or something similar. Okay, Transcendus is forced from Atlanta here. London, in all fairness, to use her idea to try and come forward with, and Prophet drops the grab here. Ursta goes down. Set up is good. Jester gets the charge. Poker went able to shield his team from their self-destruct. And Atlanta now back to spawn once more, and London 
you kind of understand this, right? Wanting to play a little bit further forward. Oh, yeah. I mean, you play forward, you force, you know, potentially an issue where you can land a big shatter here. Is, well, let's say Baby Bay throws down the graph, right? And then you want to swing through it. It could be like a counter shatter here opportunity. So you have a, also sound barrier and transcendence. So you have a lot of power through. So let's see if Yuri can get another one of these. So you see the, the defense matrix bar building up there on the right. He's really low. Didn't have any usage of it. Now has full usage of it. Trying to keep that defense matrix uh, stocked up. It's a resource that needs to be managed as well. So Fury jumps in the middle of it, throws out that defense matrix by Baby Bay, still gets the grab off. He waited it out. Yes. Good patience there from Baby Bay. Oh, the Earth Shadow was beautiful though. <laughs> Popo set that one up very nicely by knocking everyone airborne just as the Graviton Surge stopped holding people down. So they were flung upward and then they got hit by the self destruct. 45 seconds left in the round. Atlanta rain, good lead. And now London have to stall. Fury switches to Reinhardt here. They got a wrecking ball for Gesture. Yeah, the Reinhardt just uh, for this sustain onto the card is Gesture just trying to swing around, extend this for as long as possible. The Nuss coming out with the Batista trying to get that immortality field. Crab may not end it here. Prop nah. still goes down. No, it looks like that wasn't going to be enough. Fury. We'll be buffing around a little bit, murdering on the tracer, trying to relive the glory days. London can keep the store. If London can find like one kill here, it would be big, but very hard for them to do that. And Lana will finish the map as well. Even though there wasn't a lot of time left in the bank, both teams will still have one more chance to come forward here out of the gates on Gibraltar and show us what they've got. Yes, it's already a 3 0, but there's 15 seconds separating these two teams in time bank. They'll both get a chance to attack with Atlanta going first. We'll see how this one turns out after the break. Shutting down Atlanta for most of this series. Baby Bay snuck a couple grabs in here, but I mean, this guy, I don't think I've seen so many ultimates. Eat. <laughs> no, I know that, that is the most this season. So, oh, really? Uh, he, uh, Fury has actually uh, negated six ultimates throughout the course of this series. So that is the current record. Really impressive. Uh, London on offense here. It looks like we're going to see a uh, good old variation of the pirate ship as you'll have the Orisa fashion setting it up on the card. Why not? I mean, if, there's, if you want to try and guarantee yourself maximum progress, seems reasonable. This also forces Atlanta to be, to be aggressive, which is not something that they need to be encouraged to do generally. Uh, you also have the, the Batista in play here for Bidotion, so the immortality field to keep the Bastion topped up. Is How do you want to attack this if you're Atlanta? You can just drop down. I, I think mean, you kind of have to play above this bridge. Empire kind of needs to be on test. point with yeah. this defense matrix, Matt. Like, You'll need to drop in first. Stop the Bastion damage, we'll need to go. This is the best right chance to best get him. Yeah. Have to go now. Any later, it'll be over. Prophet taking a lot of damage and trying to heal him up. Immortality field thrown down, and Prophet is able to do some work, but not enough. FRD takes him out. And now there's not much damage left for the London Spitfire to be working with here. They are pretty much trying to retreat, but they weren't given the chance to do even that. Very nicely done by Atlanta. That was what they needed. Yeah, that was the best opportunity for them to attack. They had the opportunity to drop down from the bridge. Uh, you see Fury potentially trying to force OT. It doesn't really matter, though. That is where the payload progress will stop for the London Spitfire. And I know just so uh, you see the Atlanta guys on stage laughing. I, uh, I have a feeling they may try, try the same here. <laughs> but look, okay, hey, guys, we have seen top teams mess that up. Right? The sequencing yeah. of Diva to fly down, Defense Matrix, Zarya Bubble, your Winston. Uh, and they managed to very quickly break the immortality field that Bedosa threw in there. So you can't fault them for that. That was well responded oh, to. Good play by Atlanta. And also, like, you know, get some respect back from London. Be like, hey, don't you try and throw that look at us. Well, I mean, I, I think that's a look we're going to... I mean, we see it on Junkertown all the time, right? I think uh, there's some more escort maps come in. Is, uh, you see Atlanta, but they, they may have lost this series here, but they, they I think they kind of understand. Like, they're working adding FRD and Other adding Baby Bay. Atlanta fans can know that their process. team will always keep their heads up in these situations yeah. as well. You also have Kodak. I know Kodak and Dogman have kind of, like, rotated in and out sometimes. So now it seems like Kodak has played the whole series, yep. so getting him more runs, so. Yeah, nice to see the German get to stretch his legs a bit. 
So that's the, uh, the box of victory here for Atlanta. That's as far as they need to go. And that was obviously exactly how far London got last round. They have a minute and 15. So, uh, yeah, slightly more time. 15 seconds in Overwatch terms is the, a flash. The London Spitfire going to play this close. You would not come out with the Moira and the Reinhardt composition if you wanted to play in that open space towards the end. They want to play this close around the corner. They want to go, well, they have to stop the payload early, Matt. So they might try and use the underpass to do that. Ooh, nice. nice little boot from Master. But this kind of puts them in the position that they would have played anyway. Yeah, but I don't know if like, they really want to fight here. I guess they think they'll get a second fighter if they uh, if they lose this one out there. Again, Master, good displaced, but Jesh is taking too much damage here. He's getting pushed around that corner. Forced to charge. Jesh may have been knocked off the map if he didn't charge there. But Ersti goes down a bird ring early. Now... The balance of power starts to shift a little bit in this fight. They lose gestures, so London will be backing up likely anyway. They slowed down the rain for now. Yeah, Moss is such a nuisance there for the London Spitfire in that first fight. Is you know, he was able to get up top for the Atlanta rain, get those boops down. See the new boop, right? For yeah. What it can do to you. Because you know. it, it takes, I think it takes vertical motion into account much more now. So still in uh, you know, one fight territory, Baby Bay really charged up on Zarya, already at his Graviton Surge. But Ocean with the Coalescence could actually fade out of the Graviton Surge if he gets stuck in it. Coalescence may not be enough healing. Oh, he's forced to use it early. Maybe he's just chilled for now. There's no reason for him to go aggressive. They can burn Jester early in the fight. That will be huge when he gets a repair pack. He is kept alive. Baby Bay, surely time for a grab soon. London actually gets theirs off first, so Baby Bay is patience. Will it actually help him or prove to be his downfall in the end? He goes for the grab now, but Urshana shuts down Atlanta Rain. They can't follow up. Fury self destruct. They get Baby Bay. It's traded out though. Fury does go down to FRDs, but it's not going to be enough. London able to slow things down. Pedotion is missing. London don't have a lot of healing, but they do have Zaya. So much damage. Masa getting stunned here. He's still able to stay alive thanks to his mechanics. And they'll have to slink away for now. FRD is going to be able to hold the fort until Ursta returns to the fight. Now a rally for Bird Ring, so the remaining combatants for the London Spitfire have that extra durability to go forward with. Reinforcements are on the way from London. Prophet is close to yet another grab. He's so charged up. Tearing through the Atlanta rain right now. And Baby Bay switched to Tracer. So no grab for Atlanta. And there it is. Prophet lays it down. Popo, you saw he was caught in that one. So is the rest of his team. And London put a stop to the shenanigans. They try some cheese on the uh, offensive side, but then they turn around with, again, the no-nonsense composition. Two grabs for Profit, by the way, in the space of one fight. That's uh, pretty darn nice. And the Atlanta Rain are stopped short here. They will not get a map win, which is what they were really aiming for here towards the later part of the series. London, though, squeaky clean. Oh, no, I think you know, the biggest difference in this match thus far was Yuri's play, whether he was playing, you know, Sombra, D.Va, there he switches the Tracer at the end. Finish this map with uh, 56, uh, 46 eliminations, 19 final blows. Uh, puts together a very strong series overall. We know a lot of the players, they talk about him it being the best diva in the league. I think you saw it today. Again, the London Spitfire seem to be running headlong into an era where they'll be feared by one and all. They're familiar with it, but uh, you know they definitely want to be able to keep it going throughout the entirety of this season. There's much to prepare for, stage two playoffs, and of course, the big one. So keeping those map wins and series wins coming is very important. Let's head down to the stage. They mattered here a little bit from Gesture with Danny. Thanks, guys. What is up, everybody? I am here with Gesture from London Spitfire. <laughs> Woo! Congratulations. Great job. Now, sort of a uh, slow start against the Florida Mayhem, but today you guys seem to be very, very dominant against Atlanta Rain. 4-0, clean sweep. Did anything anything change in between those two match days? 자, 어, 어떻게 보면 플로리다 때는 아무래도 좀 스테이지 첫 번째 이제 경기구 해서 좀 더딘 모습을 보여준 것 같아요. 당연히 너무나 잘하시긴 하셨지만 근데 오늘 또 너무나도 더 좋은 모습을 보여줘서 좀 혹시 그두 경기 이제 중간 시간 동안 뭐가 좀 변한 게 있는지 궁금하네요. 저희가 최근에 연습할 때 많이 팀합적으로 많이 신경을 쓰고 있기 때문에 그게 조금씩 나아지면서 요즘 좀 많이 저희 팀이 나아져서 그렇게 된것 같아요. So these past couple of days and one of our focuses on scrims and practices were working on our teamwork. That I think is starting to really show and pay off. So that's why we were, you know, we were able to dominate the Atlanta Rain today. Alrighty. Next question. You guys will be playing against the Philadelphia Fusion next week, one game. You I know you guys defeated them for the grand finals playoff last season, but they beat you guys again for the start of this season. So you, this is your third time going up against them. Gesture. How confident are you that you guys could beat them? 자, 필리 아무래도 그랜드 파이널 때도 한번 했고 첫 번째 이번 시즌 첫 번째 경기 때도 한번 했고 이제 세 번째인데 확신하십니까? 이길 수 있을까요? 음, 뭐 
확실하다 말하기보단 필라델피아도 잘하는 팀이라서 이제 열심히 해서 이겨야겠지만 저번처럼 막 무력하게 지지는 않을 거예요. 이길 것 같아. So because Philadelphia uh, Fusion is also a great team, um, I wouldn't, I can't really say if we're gonna win 100%, but we will try our best to win, and we're gonna work on that. All right, cool. Thank you so much, everybody. Give it up for gesture. Uber, Mr. X, back to you guys. Thanks, Danny. And yeah, no surprise to hear that from Gesture. I, I really, I do agree with him. Their teamwork is looking very good. Yes. They're looking like their instinct for the game is is back to where it was. Uh, so let's see if they can improve on that one. Matt, we have to crown a player of the match, uh, and I think it's going to be pretty easy for us to do that. Presented to you by Omen by HP, of course, our player of the match, the one, the only Fury, it, it has breaking to be records for for ultimates negated. This guy, I mean, we've given it to a lot of divas uh, over the last week or so, but this is just a standout. The, the self-destructs, the ultimates negated, just the ability to play, you know, the, the Sombra in certain compositions he plays, you know, the Tracer there at the end with the stall, but I feel like he had a fantastic series. I think when people talk about Fury and, and you know, how highly they rate him amongst all of the Divas, I feel like this is a series where you can go back and you can definitely see it right there with just a little bit of that Matrix left. 125 at limbs, only 13 deaths this, for the whole this series. Match, for four maps, some of those maps going, the full length in terms of time, by the way. So Fury, absolutely dominant. You, you really are gonna, this is the benchmark uh, for, for Divas. If you if you think someone's a great Diva, they're always gonna get put next to someone like Fury. And quite often the Overwatch League, they're gonna come out second best. So fantastic performance from him, the London Spitfire. Shaping up pretty well uh, for the rest of this stage, but there's many more challenges yet to face. Thank you very much, by the way, for joining us on Disney XD. For those of us hanging around on Twitch and ESPN3, it's the Vancouver Titans versus the Hangzhou Spark. A first look at these two juggernauts here in stage two. Will they come up with anything crazy? Will we, they, they be just as solid as before? Stick around, you'll find it all out here. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Toyota, official North American partner of the Overwatch League. Toyota, let's go places. Okay. You know what's up. Uh, <laughs>